Hello my school last year. welcome to my school channel and my name is Fran. So in this lesson video, we are going to be uh, starting with our topic by topic lessons and phases. So I promise you this lesson is going to be interesting, it's going to be very informative and educative. So please do not go anywhere, relax, we'll be right back. Hello my scholars, welcome back to my school channel. So in today's video, we are going to be starting off with the first topic in our physics topic by topic lesson video. Okay, and we are beginning with fundamental and derived quantity. So let's move to the next slide to see the objective of this lesson. So in the objective of this lesson, at the end of this lesson, we should be able to say the meaning of fundamental and derived quantities and units. We should be able to give examples of fundamental and derived quantities and their units, state the difference between fundamental and derived quantities and their units, then we should also be able to uh, state the system of units, mention the types, the merits of SI units. Then uh, we should also be able to derive the dimensions of physical quantity, which is very, very important as far as physics is concerned. Okay, and lastly, we should be able to state the uses and limitation of dimension. Okay, so let's move over to the next slide to uh, begin our lesson. Okay, so basically we are going to be looking at the meaning of physical quantity. So by physical quantity in physics, uh, we are referring to a property of a material or a system that can be quantified by measurement. Okay, so to specify a physical quantity, we need two things, which are the number or quantity and each unit of measurement. Okay, so in physics, physical quantity is divided into two, fundamental quantities and derived quantities. So what do we mean by fundamental quantities? So fundamental quantities are those quantities that do not depend on other physical quantities. Okay, uh, what that means is that these quantities can stand alone. Okay, and examples of such quantities are mass, length, time, temperature, amount of substance, etc. Okay, then the number two type of physical quantity known as the derived quantities. So these derived quantities, they depend on other quantities for their definition. Okay, what that means is that these quantities cannot stand alone. And a good example of such quantity is the weight, the area, the force, uh, momentum, etc. So let's move over to the slide to see the uh, difference between fundamental and derived quantity. So number one is that uh, for fundamental quantities, they are based on international system. Whereas for derived quantities, they are formulated from international system. Okay. One number two is that the fundamental quantities, they are the basic unit of measurement. Okay. Whereas the derived quantities are not the basic unit of measurement. Okay. Why? Number three is that they have direct calculations. Okay, while for the derived quantity, their calculations are derived. Okay, you need to combine uh, fundamental quantities or a fundamental quantities and a derived quantity to be able to perform their calculation. Okay, why number four, they are generally acceptable quantities. Okay, the fundamental quantities are generally acceptable everywhere in the world. Okay, why the derived quantities, they are just accepted. Why, the last but not the least, the fundamental quantities can stand alone, whereas the derived quantities cannot stand alone. So let's move over to the next slide. Um, okay, let's talk about unit. Okay, so we all know that in physics, the process of measurement is a comparison process, right? And unit is the standard quantity used for comparison. So let's talk about the characteristics of a unit. Like when you are choosing a unit, what are um, some of the characteristics of the uh, chosen unit. Okay, one of them is that it should be suitable to use. Okay, the unit should be suitable to use. Let's take for example, let's say uh, mass, the unit of mass is kg. Okay, so that unit is suitable for mass, right? Now let's move to number two. It should be accurately defined. Okay, it should be accurately defined so that everybody understands the unit in the same way. Why number three? is it should be easily reproducible, it should be something that everyone can copy. Okay, number four, it should not change with time. Okay, for example, the unit of time is second. 
okay before I, were, I was born till now it still remains second so it should not change with time okay and lastly it should be universally acceptable for example the unit of time everywhere in the world is measured in seconds time is measured in seconds everywhere in the world so it should be universally acceptable okay let's move over to the next slide so on the next slide we'll be talking about fundamental and derived unit so what do we mean by fundamental unit so fundamental units are the unit of the fundamental quantities okay so just like the fundamental quantities which are independent of other physical quantities the fundamental units are also independent of other units okay and this fundamental unit cannot be further resolved into any other unit or unit of fundamental quantities okay so a good example of, of fundamental uh, units are kilogram we have the meter we have the mole etc okay while the derived units are the unit of the derived quantities okay so just like the derived quantity that depends on other quantities for their definition the derived unit also depends on other units for their definition and a good example of derived unit is the unit of speed which is meter per second the unit of volume which is meter cube while the uh, unit of area which is meter uh, square okay so let's move over to the next slide so here we see the difference between fundamental unit and derived unit so the uh, fundamental unit they are standard unit of measurement whereas the derived unit they are not standard unit of measurement okay so the fundamental unit they are generally acceptable all over the world Okay, why the derived units are not generally acceptable all, or they are not generally accepted all over the world. Okay, why um, thirdly, the fundamental units form the basis of all measurement. Okay, whereas the derived units, they are not the basis of all measurement. Okay, so the fundamental units are also known as SI units, whereas the derived units are just known as units okay why number five which is the last they are acceptable by international organization okay why the derived unit though accepted internationally they are formulated by individuals okay so let's move over to the next slide okay here we'll be talking about system of units okay so by system of units we are uh, referring to a complete set of fundamental and derived units for all physical quantities okay so we have about three types of system of units so we have the fpx we have the cgx and we have the mks so what do we mean by fps so the s star for foot why the p star for pound why the s star for second okay so this fps system is also known as the british engineering system of units so in this system the unit of length is taken as foot the unit of mass is the pound, Why that of time is the second. Okay, Why secondly, we have the CGS system. So the CGS system is also known as Gaussian system of units. Okay, so uh, the C that stands for centimeter, the G stands for gram, Why the S stands for second. So in this system, the unit of length is taken as centimeter, Why the unit of uh, mass is the gram, and that of time is second why the third uh, type of system of units which is the mks system okay there m they start for meter k start for kilogram and s start for second so in this system this system is related to mechanics only so in this system the unit of length is meter the uh, unit of mass is the kilogram and that of time is second okay next we talk about the si unit also known as the international unit so before 1971 different countries used uh, different sets of units so in order to avoid complexity in 1971 by international agreement seven physical quantities we are chosen as fundamental quantities and two as supplementary so we have come to the end of this video for today but you can get the complete video on the my school website there we will talk more about the si unit we'll talk about uh, the quantities that are referred to as the supplementary quantities then the fundamental quantities we we'll list them and their units and how to write their symbols okay uh, there too we we'll also talk about the merits of uh, the si unit 
they will also talk about the convention for writing units. You don't just write units in physics. Okay, there are some rules. Okay, that you need to observe when writing uh, merits in physics. All this you are going to see it in the complete video. Well, in the complete video too, we also talk about dimensional analysis of physical quantities. How to write the dimension of physical quantity. The rules that you need to observe when writing the dimension of physical quantities. Okay, there we'll talk about the uses of dimension analysis and the limitation of dimension analysis. And above all, we also have solved examples. And these examples are actually picked from Wayek and Jap past questions so all these are more are valuable in the complete video so what are you waiting for just click on the link in the description below and this will take you to my school website for you to learn more about the complete video and i strongly believe that you've gained something from the little we have shown you uh, today uh, please do not forget to hit the like button click on the subscribe button and lastly tap on the notification bell to get informed as soon as you upload the next video see you there